All sorts of injury clarity for the Minnesota Wild heading into tonight's game against the Montreal Canadiens. So we'll get you up to speed with who's missing what amount of time, who's out of the lineup today, and we'll take a look at the better Montreal Canadiens on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Brandon Duham, and this is Locked On Wild. What is happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we'll get you up to speed on the latest injury news for the Wild with timetables for Jared Spurgeon. We'll talk about Vinny Letary, who was dinged up at the end of the game against the Bruins, also a potential for uh, a defenseman injury, another defenseman injury uh, in today's game. So we'll get you caught up with everything that we've learned from morning skate today, gearing you up for tonight's game against the Montreal Canadiens. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, and uh, today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Welcome in, everybody. And uh, we learned a lot today and even yesterday about some of the uh, injuries that the Minnesota Wilds are going through. And um, let's just kind of go through them here gearing you up for tonight's game. So obviously uh, it was reported yesterday that Matt Zuccarello has been put on injured reserve. And uh, let's just make a key distinction here at this point. Uh, It is just standard injured reserve for Matt Zuccarello. It is not long-term injured reserve as it was for Jonas Brodeen. And so what this does is I think this gives the uh, the wild the option, the opportunity to potentially call somebody else up in the event that they have an additional injury uh, during this roster freeze. Because uh, as we know, for injured reserve, all determinations that a player has suffered in injury warranting injured reserve status must be made by the club's medical staff and in advance with the club's medical standards. A player placed on injured reserve is ineligible to compete in NHL games for a period of not less than seven days. And we know that long term injured reserve is if you are going to miss upwards of 24 days and 10 games. So Zuccarello is somewhere between seven days and 24 days. Now, I believe the Minnesota Wild could, if needed, push Zuccarello from injured reserve to long-term injured reserve um, as we go. But this is not going to be something where He's going to miss the amount of time that Brodeen likely will, the amount of time Goligoski missed earlier in the season, the amount of time Spurgeon missed early on in the year. So there's hope that it is going to be a week or two, but not upwards of you know those 24 actual days or 10 games, which would warrant him being put on long-term injured reserve. Now, also, after the game against the Bruins, Vinny Letary had to get help to the uh, training room after blocking a shot. By all accounts, he's fine. He is uh, expected to be in the lineup tonight. And so I think the Wilds dodged a bullet against the, uh, the Bruins in that regard. And on the Jared Spurgeon front, John Hines talking to the uh, media after practice today. It sounds like there is hope that he could potentially be ready to go for Saturday's game against Boston. So Spurgeon is getting close 
which is great news because there is another defenseman injury that could potentially flare up here for tonight's game. We don't know the specifics, but Hines mentioning that one of the defensemen for the Wild is a game-time decision. Jesse Pierce noting that Zach Bogosian came off the ice early for defensemen, and so it could be that it's him. I guess we'll wait and see who is in the lineup for tonight's game, but the hits just keep on coming, folks, and uh, it's a wild team that has not been shorted on injuries so far this season. So the good news is that the expectation would be that Dakota Mermis gets in to the game if somebody's not able to go, but your bad news then is if it is, let's just say, Zach Bogosian who can't go tonight, that you've got Mermis in, but you also then have Goligoski and Merrill in here tonight. And it's not a it's not a Montreal team that is particularly threatening, but there are some things to keep an eye on for this type of game that are a little concerning for me, which we'll talk about here coming up. So if the Wild do get Spurgeon back, I think what that allows you to do is to slot Spurgeon back in with Middleton as your top pairing. And whether it be Brock Faber with whoever, preferably Bogosian, Faber has shown the ability to be able to handle a lot, which that would be that would be the ask for him would be uh, to take that other majority of that defense on that pairing and just handle it himself. We did see earlier in the season with Brodeen out and Spurgeon still in that Spurgeon ended up being the one paired with one of the others and uh, Faber and Middleton were paired together. So the Wild do have options for how they want to attack this depending on when Spurgeon returns and hopefully the fact that they don't lose anybody else. My Christmas wish that the Wilds avoid any other major injuries already not off to a good start. And uh, I just made that yesterday. So uh, we'll we'll see in that regard. But thankfully, it looks like Letary is going to be able to, uh, to slot in and play. He's been great with Duhame and Dewar on that fourth line combination. I did find interesting as well. I didn't even catch this. I, I've got to admit, I did not even catch that this was a change that was made. Um, Marcus Felino and Marcus Johansson have switched in the lineup. So Felino with Rossi and Hartman and Johansson with Goudreau and Maroon. So we've seen John Hines with a slight tweak of those two lines. And I think that makes what happened in Boston even a little more encouraging because now you didn't just get scoring from two lines. You had three different lines that were able to light the lamp in that game. And that is going to need to be something, especially with Matt Zuccarello out of the lineup that this team continues because you can't just put it all on the shoulders of say Matt Boldy or Kirill Kaprizov. You've got to have that balanced scoring, the guys that can step in and score the goals when Kaprizov and or Boldy don't. So the fact that the Wild got three of four lines to record goals makes that even a little more impressive. And obviously those line combinations looked pretty good against Boston, so I'm intrigued to see now that we know that there was a little bit of a tweak made. I'm intrigued to see how that all looks again here tonight against the Montreal Canadiens. And folks, it's a Montreal team that still is not super good, but I'm worried about a little something else heading into tonight's game. And so we will discuss what exactly I am concerned about most in tonight's game as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. 
Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we are your team every day. want to remind you as well, if you haven't already, we are up for the Top Hockey Podcast of the Year and the Sports Podcast Awards. Link will be in the description for how you can vote for Locked on Wild. And a huge congratulations to our good friends over at the Bar Down Beauties podcast, who uh, are also a finalist this year, Jesse and Kirsten. Incredible job that they do uh, covering the team, much like Locked on Wild does. And so uh, huge ups for them for also being a finalist in the Sports Podcast Awards. So if you uh, would like to help us out, give us a vote. And uh, again, the link will be in the description. So tonight's game against the Montreal Canadiens. The Canadiens coming into this game 14, 13, and 4. So they're in a much similar spot to where the Minnesota Wilds currently find themselves. Just uh, under 500. It's not over 500. I'll continue to... uh, Continue to beleaguer that point. Um, and two points ahead of the the wild here in uh in the early part of the season. But the thing that is, I think, kind of surprising to me is that Montreal has been one of the teams that has gone to a shootout most frequently. They have gone to six shootouts through the first 31 games of the season. They're three and three. In those shootouts, the Minnesota Wilds, obviously three and two. But beyond that, the only other team that has uh, been to five, there are a couple teams. Toronto's been to five. Washington has been to five. And the Minnesota Wild, obviously, have been to five. The Seattle Kraken have been to five as well. And so it's a Montreal team that if they can get it to overtime, they are likely going to a shootout. If they can keep it tied at the end of regulation, it's probably going to go to a shootout. And their most successful shootout players so far this season have uh, been some of the uh, the names that you would expect. Nick Suzuki is four of six. Cole Caulfield, just two of six. But um, also... They've got uh, Jesse Lonan, who is two of three. They're 10 of 32 in shootouts so far this season. But you look at the regulation numbers, they have just six regulation wins so far this season. And so it's a team that if you can get, if you can take care of your business and get out to an early lead, it's a team that really is not as suited to win games in regulation. And that six regulation wins is actually the fewest in the NHL. Now, the Wild have nine, so they're not far off. But again, it's a team that I think if you can get to them early, you can put this one away to where you're not going to have to sweat it. And what did we? what do we remember about the first time these two teams played? It was a 5-2 to two win for the Minnesota Wilds. They scored two shorthanded goals on the same power play. And Montreal, by and large, 
just looked terrible in that game. And for Minnesota, they had not gotten off to the start that anybody wanted. And so it was one of those games where the wild were definitely not. I mean, they, they, it, they won. It was the third game of the season. So we had not even yet begun to hit the sticks, but you had just lost to the Toronto Maple Leaf seven to four. And so you turn around and you beat Montreal and it's like, okay, now we, now we can kind of get back on track and, the wheels, uh, the wheels completely fell off as things went further and further. So some of the leaders for the Montreal Canadiens, they're led in goals by Sean Monahan. He has nine in 31 games. The Canadians do not have a uh, 10 or more goal scorer so far this season. In fact, they've only scored 84 goals in 31 games, which is roughly 2.71 goals per game which is the sixth worst in the NHL. Now, again, the Wild are averaging three per game, but that just shows you just how wide of a disparity there is that the Wild are have scored um, 100 goals so far this season, and in one fewer game, they have scored, uh, or 90 goals, excuse me. They've scored six more goals in one fewer game than the Montreal Canadiens have so far this season. And so it's going to be a game that if Montreal is going to win, they're going to have to keep it low scoring. But these teams are pretty similar in several key areas. From a shorthanded goals perspective, um, the Canadiens have... A three three shorthanded goals on the season. Their power play is at 18%. The Minnesota Wild are just one spot below them at 17.2%. And penalty kill, the Wild are at 72.2%, second worst in the NHL, just behind the New York Islanders, who are at 71.9. Montreal Canadiens are at 73.1 so far this season. And penalty wise, the Wild have been penalized the fourth most amongst teams in the NHL at 365 penalty minutes. The Canadians come in at 321. So there are some similarities between how these two teams operate so far this season, but Nick Suzuki and Cole Caulfield with eight goals apiece, Sean Monahan leading the way with nine. Alex Newhook has seven, and beyond that, those are the only guys that really have somewhat consistently scored for this Canadiens team. And so if the Wilds can get those guys off their mark, they stand a pretty good chance to be able to come away with a win in this game. Nick Suzuki has points in three straight games. For the Canadians, he has four points in that three game span. He has not scored a goal since December 9th, however, but he does have two goals in the month of December so far. And on the Cole Caulfield side of things, Caulfield also has points in back to back games. He scored against the Islanders. That was a five to three win for Montreal against the New York Islanders. And then he had a he had an assist against the Winnipeg Jets which was a 3-2 to two overtime win for the Canadians on Monday. Beyond that, Caulfield has been more on the quiet side here in December so far. He has one goal, two assists through the month of December. He is still getting a ton of shots up, although he didn't have a single shot against the Winnipeg Jets. But before that, he had four against the Islanders, six against Pittsburgh, nine shots against the Buffalo Sabres. And so those are going to be the two guys you hear most frequently from a Canadian's perspective. It has already been confirmed that they are going to go with, from a goalie perspective, Samuel Montembeau. And so we know that about the Montreal Canadiens is that we're going to see Samuel Montembeau 
in net. He's been the most consistent goalie for the uh, the Canadians so far this year. 7-4-2 and two with a 2.79 goals against average and a 9-11 save percentage. And in his most recent few starts, in fact, here in the month of December, he has been more on the beatable side. He gave up four goals against the Kings in the seventh, three goals against Pittsburgh in a 4-3 to three shootout loss, and then three goals against the Islanders. That was a 5-3 to three win for Montreal, though. So he's 2-1-1 one and one in the month of December, 2.95 goals against average, and a 9-13 save percentage. From the Minnesota Wild perspective, Kirill Kaprizov had two goals against Boston. Looks like he may be starting to get back to the levels that we had expected of him um, over the, the last few seasons. And if you look at what he's done against the Montreal Canadiens throughout his career, he had a goal and two assists in the win earlier this season. If you go back to last year, he had two goals in two games against the Canadians. If you go back to 2021-2022, he had three assists in two games against the Canadians. If you go back to his rookie season, 2020-2021, obviously, just making sure you're paying attention, obviously he didn't play the Canadians in his rookie season because the Wild were stuck with divisional games only. But the point being is that Kaprizov loves playing Montreal. And so this is a perfect opportunity for him to build off of what he did against Boston and just help turn this into a stress-free game. Stress-free is the optimal word. We're getting into the holiday season, all the shopping, everybody trying to get everything lined up for the weekend, me included. Let's have a stress-free game here tonight. There are some keys to how the Wilds can come away with a stress-free win here this evening. And uh, we'll finish today's show talking about those here on Locked on Wilds. Today's episode of the Locked on Wild podcast is brought to you by Sleeper. A new NHL season brings all sorts of possibilities, whether it be Kirill Kaprizov getting himself back towards his normal pace, Marco Rossi's pursuit of 30 goals, or the Minnesota Wild eventually down the line hoisting the Stanley Cup. You can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked on NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether elite level upper echelon players like McDavid, Ovechkin, Crosby, or McKinnon will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for stat categories such as goals, assists, saves, plus minus, or more every given game it is so easy you can go an entire round of picks in less than 60 seconds and if you're a fan of other sports you can also play daily fantasy nfl nba mlb or college football on sleeper as well my picks for tonight's game Kirill kaprizov matt boldy and i'm gonna go with marco rossi too i think marco rossi is back Gets back on track with a uh, another goal here in this one tonight, and from a goalie's perspective, you got to go with Gus Bus. It's it's not a Canadians team that has a ton of success offensively, and so there's a real good opportunity for Gus to uh, have a great start here in this one tonight. So all of that can be done when you use promo code Locked On NHL, and you'll get up to a one hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Join us after the game tonight for another Locked on Wild postcast as we'll take you through the action as the Minnesota Wilds try to pick up yet another win here and uh, go to two and one on the week. So let's talk some keys 
for tonight's matchup against the Canadians. And I teased it that there was one thing that concerned me about this game. I, I, I have no reason, I don't think, to necessarily fear this. But with the fact that Boston is looming on Saturday, avoid the trap game. Please. And the biggest reason I think, or the biggest thing that you can do to avoid playing into a trap is to start hot. Get off to a good start. Maybe get yourself a goal or two early on in this game because this is how these always go is you fall behind early and you give a team like the Montreal Canadiens incentive to continue to push, incentive to continue to try to stay in the game. Six regulation wins in 31 games. They, It's a Montreal team that if you can just get to them early, if you get a first period goal, add to it early on in the second and put this thing away, Montreal will be okay with that. Say, okay, that's fine. We tried. But just if you fall behind early on, if you start slow, the Wilds have had they have had an opportunity for rest since Tuesday's game against Boston. You're also dealing with kind of that emotional letdown after the exciting win on Tuesday against the Bruins. So just guard against all of that and just go out there and work hard and win puck battles and don't make this any harder than it has to be. Um it, it this is a game that you really shouldn't have to sweat. So just take care of business early on, avoid the trap game, win puck battles, get yourself an early lead. And that I think is the biggest key to coming away with the win here in this game tonight. Now, key number two is for the Minnesota Wild power play, who finally got back on the score sheet against the Boston Bruins. Let's build off of it. Let's make it two games in a row. Montreal's penalty kill is not good. They're just percentage points ahead of the Minnesota Wild in terms of penalty kill effectiveness. Let's flip-flop with them tonight. Let's see the Wild penalty kill stop a power play that is in a similar level of success to the Minnesota Wild. And let's see the power play cash in and take advantage. Maybe it's Marcus Johansson who is able to bury a power play opportunity against the Bruins. Maybe he has the opportunity to cash in another one here tonight. So that is key number two is for the, um, for the power play and penalty kill to step up and enjoy and then have a fun one here tonight. And the third key in tonight's matchup, I think is one that, you know, we don't talk about a ton because it isn't often that you have uh, the opportunity for it to be as, uh, as big of a disparity as it typically is, but let's see the bottom six. Let's see the bottom six win their matchups in this one tonight. You're at home. You have the opportunity to dictate, line combinations, line matchups. And for the Canadians, there are some there are some notable names in the bottom 6 for the uh, Canadians. But we all know how much we enjoy the fourth line and what they're able to do on a nightly basis. Maybe we see the fourth line get on the score sheet here in uh, tonight's game and win that battle against Emil Heineman, Mitchell Stevens, and Jesse Yulonen. Maybe we see Duhame, Dewar, and Letary take those guys to task and get a couple of goals in this one tonight. Um, I, I think, I think those are really the biggest things for a win here in this one. Um, Philip Gustafson should be able to get. He should be able to have a solid start here tonight because the Canadians are not in a hugely offensively inclined team. And so if he can simply make the saves that he should and a couple of the saves that are a little more higher difficulty level, then this this team should be fine. Uh, the Wild should be fine in this one tonight. Now, players that I'm going to watch, things to keep an eye on in tonight's game. 
Let's see Kirill Kaprizov. Let's see him bat, build off of the uh, strong finish to Boston's game. Let's see him build off of that. Also want to see Marco Rossi who continues to do the the little things, getting to the net. Let's see if he can get rewarded with the goal here uh, in this one. And, of course, watching the D combinations, uh, hoping for the best, but uh, – Depending on how the combinations line up, that could be uh, that could be a hair puller in tonight's matchup. But all in all, I do think the Minnesota Wild come away with a win tonight. Let's say four to one. I just really hope that it's one that you don't have to super stress about, and I hope that the Wild avoid the trap game, take care of the business in front of you, and the easiest way to do that is to simply start the game strong. Don't sleepwalk through the first quarter our first period because you could find yourself trailing and nobody needs that. So just take care of business and gear up for uh, another exciting one on Saturday. We'll have you covered after tonight's game, as mentioned with our usual locked on wild postcast. So make sure that you tune in with us after hopefully another Minnesota wild win. Make sure that you vote in the Sports Podcast Awards, as mentioned, for Lockdown Wild as the best hockey podcast of 2024. So uh, link is in the description. Vote if you have not already. I think you can vote once per email address. So throw us a vote if you'd like. Uh, we certainly appreciate all of the listener support, and uh, we will talk to you again after the game as uh, the Minnesota Wild take on Montreal here this evening. You can find new Locked on Wild content and episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Podcast Network.